What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right. So before I get into this particular video, I want to give a shout out to the brother Aram for the donation to the channel via the PayPal. And he leaves a note that says, uh, uh, "I'm part of a chat group." The discussion was if Tim Duncan and Larry Bird was drafted into the ABA. They would have not been as great and successful. My retort was that they would have dominated the league. What are your thoughts, Mike? Um, man, I, I, honestly, now look, this is one of those what ifs that's that's really open to interpretation, different interpretations. Um, there's no right or wrong answer here, so. You know what I'm saying? This is strictly opinion based. A lot of us like this because it's fun. Um, I mean, me. Let me start with Tim Duncan. See, it's the thing. Like, Tim Duncan came into the NBA, what, 20 years after the dismantling of the ABA? So I'm assuming. That in this situation, the ABA continued to be a rival to the NBA, much like how the WCW was a rival to WWE, right? For many years. Um, so the thing is, are we going under the assumption that the ABA would have been similar in the 90s or the 80s as to what it was in the 70s as far as style of play and the strengths and weaknesses? Are we operating on that assumption or there's different, you know, I mean, look, if we're operating under how the ABA was structured in the 70s and the style of play and the strengths versus the weaknesses, and, and, and that continued into the 80s and 90s, and let's say it, the, the league folded in, I don't know, the 2000s. Let's just go with that. Let's just go with that scenario. Well, Tim Duncan possibly would have been the greatest player in ABA history. Um, and, and the reason why I operate on that assumption is the ABA had a tremendous strength, and that was his guard play. Uh, Rick Barrett went to the ABA, and came back a more complete basketball player. He was a better ball handler. He was a better facilitator. He was a better defender. And he was in better shape. I mean, he was already in great basketball shape, but he got even in better shape. And he became more than just a primary scorer. He became a totally complete player. And that came from competing in a league that demanded that he got better and improved his skill because of the awesome perimeter perimeter uh, guard play, especially after the first couple of years. But one of the weaknesses in the, in the ABA was the center position. That's where the NBA definitely had an advantage. Okay, I mean, when you think about it, yeah, they had Zelmo Beatty, uh, they had Artis Gilmore and Mel Daniels and a couple other, but think about it. Mel Daniels was a per perennial all-star in the ABA, but in the NBA, he probably would have been, I would say, a good but not great big man. Very, very good, but probably not great big man if he was in the NBA, especially if you're talking about in the 80s. If he played, you know, that's how I see him. Artis Gilmore was basically Will Chamberlain. He was the ABA's version of Will Chamberlain, right? When he went to the NBA, he was good, really good, Hall of Fame level, but he wasn't dominating in the same way because of the – it was just more talent in the center position. Well, as far as a big man. So I'm assuming 
if Tim Duncan played in the ABA. Back then, I wouldn't even be surprised if. Well, let's 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 put them. Let's keep them in the nineties. If the talent level was still a little bit subpar, nobody's stopping Tim Duncan. Nobody. I mean, he didn't stop in the NBA. But if he played in the ABA, and and, and let's, let's say the talent level of that position was still kind of a little lax, uh, he'd have been the most dominant player in ABA history. I, I, I'm thinking, especially if they built a team around him, that he was number one focal point. Man, I don't see why he doesn't average in the ABA 30 and 17. And I'm being honest. I'm being dead serious. 30 and 17 or 30 and 15, 30 and 16, somewhere in that range. Um, Complete domination by him. I think he would have been the greatest ABA player of all time. Especially, Especially if you're talking about from an individual standpoint as far as dominance. If they build a good, but then again, if you're that dominant, you still should at least get to the ABA finals. You know what I'm saying? If they just build a good team around him, he could have been championship contenders for years ago. Larry Bird is so skilled um, as a player. Plus, he has size on his uh, on his uh, as an asset for him. Six nine and a half. Um. I remember at the beginning of his career, he was a power forward. So he still would have those same advantages. But he's operating with skills that at that time were not common at that position. So, yeah, the assertion that they would have been worse doesn't make any sense. It would have been better. It would have been the two most dominant players in the, in the, in the history of the ABA, along with Julius Servant. And by the way, man, let's be honest, Larry Bird is white. So... You could make an argument since Bird came of age in 78, 79, came in the NBA in 79. If the ABA had just somehow lingered a little bit longer, a little bit longer, Bird could have, I mean, with the style of play, the up and down, colorful personalities, uh, the game was so visually exciting to watch. Um, I mean, man, could, yeah, Bird would have brought asses to the seats. In those seats and asses, excuse me. He would have brought, yeah, well, I guess I was right the first time. He would have brought, put asses in the seats, and um, the ABA could have, if they marketed correctly, if it's not uh, Magic and Larry, it could have been Dr. J versus Bird. The two small forwards. One is a high flyer, athletic phenom. The other one, more of a ground game, but a sharpshooter, team oriented style of play. Uh, they could have marketed it perfectly, and the ABA could have soared and lasted for more several more years to come. That's how I look at it. Larry Bird could have saved the ABA potentially along with Julius Erb, because that's what Julius Erb was missing, really, that that key rival. You know, Rick Barry didn't have that personality like that, you know. And, and when Rick Barry went back to the NBA is when Julius Erb really made his ascension, ascension anyway. So they could have marketed that rivalry. And hell, if somehow Magic – Dips from the dips from the Lakers and signs with the, the ABA. Hell, man, we could be talking about a permanent fixture, ABA that may eventually, in a couple of decades, supersede the NBA. That's possible, but I know this is just pie in the sky stuff, man. Just just talking. But that's just a scenario I, I have, you know. But yeah, in my opinion. No, they wouldn't have. Uh, they wouldn't have struggled at all. No, sir. Those are once in a generation talents, man. These are arguably two top ten all time players, possibly top five. No, they would have been. They would have dominated the ABA. 
I don't know about championships, but I, I would assume that they would have been in that order uh, as far as winning titles. But I don't like put a number on it. But individually, no, they would have they would have dominated. That's just my take on it. Tell me what you guys think.